our lesson today, we'll be solving problems involving the equations of rectilinear motion. During the last class, we derived the three equations of rectilinear motion. How would you make use of these equations in solving problems? This is the procedure. The first step is to read the question carefully. And the reason why you have to be careful is in order for you to bring out the parameters that are stated in the question. So the first step, you read the question carefully. The second step, you write out the parameters given in the question. And from those parameters, you'll be able to select the appropriate equation. The third step, you pick the equation that best suits the parameters given in the question. Let's solve some examples. Example number one. A car traveling at an initial velocity of 3 meters per second accelerates uniformly at the rate of 0.4 meters per second squared for 50 seconds. Calculate its final velocity. What would you do here? The first step is to read the question carefully. We have just read the question. The second step is to do what? Is to write out the parameters given in the question. What are those parameters? Here we have that a car traveling at an initial velocity. Initial velocity equals to 3 meters per second. These are the parameters. The first one is the initial velocity. Accelerate uniformly at the rate of 0.4 meters per second squared. The second parameter is the acceleration. Accelerate uniformly. So we have acceleration at 0.4 meters per second squared for 50 seconds. This is the third parameter, 50 seconds. So what is this? What physical quantity has the SI unit of seconds? That is time. So here we state that the time is 50 seconds. What else do we have? Calculate its final velocity. Final velocity. V stands for final velocity. We have to calculate. So after listing all the parameters you have, then you decide the appropriate equation of rectilinear motion to use. Which one would you use? Remember, there are three equations of rectilinear motion. We have V equals to U plus AT. We have S equals to UT plus half AT squared. And the third one is V squared equals to U squared plus 2AS. Capital letter S here. And don't forget this one that we normally use u plus v divided by 2 multiplied by c. This is a step we pass through while trying to derive this second equation of rectilinear motion. So sometimes we use this equation in solving some problems. So from these parameters given to you, you select the appropriate equation to use among this. Which one would you use? Here you are giving you a, T, and V. Which of these equations has these parameters? The first equation has it. We have V, we have U, we have A, we have T. What about the second one? In the second equation, we have S. We have S here. We don't have S here. The second equation would not work. Let's see the third one. We have V, we have U, we have A, we have S. We don't have S here. The second equation would not work. This one would not also work because we have S here. So this is the appropriate equation of rectilinear motion to use. The problem that most students usually face is the decision on which equation to use in solving a particular problem. So this is the best way to decide which equation to use in solving the problem. If you don't list out the parameters you have, you find it difficult to decide the particular equation you use. So, we are using this equation V equals to U plus A T. When you are solving problem in physics, you selecting the correct equation is the beginning of the solution. Your equation alone is one mark. Then you continue with the procedure. So, we use this equation in solving the problem. All of this we do not need. We are going to take them off. V is unknown. V equals to what is U in the question? U is 3 plus A. What is our A? 0 0.4. T. What's our T? 50. You know, the sign between these two is multiplication. If you have A T, it means A multiplied by T. So we have A multiplied by our T. 50. 
That's it. Three plus. 0 0.4 multiplied by 50. That is 20. That's our V. That's equal to 23 meters per second. That's all. Correct. Perfect. Let's take another example. The second example. A bus traveling at an initial velocity of 2 meters per second accelerates at a uniform rate of 0 0.7 meters per second square for 20 seconds. Calculate the distance traveled during these 20 seconds. The first step, you read the question, we've done that. The second step, you list out the parameters given to you in the question. What do we have? A bus traveling at an initial velocity Initial velocity of 2 meters per second accelerates at a uniform rate of acceleration 0.7 meters per second square. You know, writing like this and like this is the same thing. For 20 seconds, that is your time. Because the extra unit of time is seconds. Calculate the distance traveled. S is the unknown. So which equation of rectilinear motion has these parameters? Is it the first, second, or the third? The first equation, we do not have, we have V here, we don't have V here. So the first equation is not going to Work. What about the second one? S, S, U, U, T, T, A, A, T, T. The second equation is going to work. What about the third one? V. We don't have V here. The third one is not going to work. So this is the equation we are going to use to solve the problem. So, S equals to U, T plus half A, T square. S is equals to U. What's our U? 2. Multiply by t, or t is 20, plus half multiplied by a, our a is 0 0.7, multiply by our t squared, 20, t is 20, 20 squared. That is equal to 2 multiplied by 20, you have 40, plus half multiplied by 0 0.7, Multiply by 20 squared, that is equal to 400. 40, we have 40 plus half multiplied by 0 0.7, we have 0 0.35. 0 0.35 multiplied by 400, we have 140. 40 plus 140, we have 180 meters. That is our answer. You must put your meters here, which is the SI unit of distance. So, this is not part of our solution. So we don't need this. That's it. Oibo, you call it Oibo. Oibo, why are you speaking Oibo? Oibo, you the Lagos Oibo. If I carry you go banana, my guy, you go love Lagos.